talking of speakers, tonight uh, I have the privilege of uh, introducing you to one of our GIG members and an old friend of ours, uh, Rick Weringer, um, his wife Helen, uh, so like my wife's name is also Helen. Helen worked uh, with us in the office here for a while and uh, we became good friends as family and uh, Rick is quite uh, a, an accomplished businessman with uh, especially uh, his, he's got his roots in Rick, if I leave out something, uh, uh, you know, add, <laughs> But, uh, yeah. I, 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 when I think of Rick, I'm only thinking of a guy who's who's a, a guy who's an astute director in the finance. Uh, and I know uh, at the time that we we started to work together uh, in New Life, uh, uh, he oh, okay. Okay, sure. uh, appointed in in uh, Nigeria to help set up. Uh, I think it was an insurance fund or something. Uh, so he's well traveled, uh, worked uh, in many industries. But now he has found another passion of his, and that is uh, to help people get out of debt and start building wealth for the long term. So, uh, Rick, if I left out anything, you're welcome to take over and uh, elaborate a bit. But Rick is going to talk to us tonight on the topic of interest. Is it working for you or against you? And I see you added something to his title here, like reinvent your strategy to create family wealth by going from rags to riches. But we're all curious and open ears. So over to you, Rick. Thank you very much, Yasmin. And good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to this uh, presentation. Uh, thank you, Jasper. That was very uh, complimentary. I, I find I'm just a, a regular dude. In fact, you and I were pre-partners, so are still pre-partners. So that's right, yeah. And, and that's 100%. right. So... Um, Folks, my, my talk tonight is, I do apologize if the word rags is offensive to anybody, um, but that really conveys the substance of what we're talking about this evening, is to say that we can materially change where we are by having a vision of where we want to go to and then converting that vision into, into action. So as I, as I move to the next slide, Okay, so it should move. Da -da -da -da. So here's my family. I'm this handsome dude over here. Uh, and here's, here's, here's Helen. And why I'm conveying this picture, please, is to point out to you that we represent three generations in the photo here, since here's our two daughters and here's our grandchildren. I've got the bestest uh, grandchildren in the whole world. Uh, no challenge on that. Um, but why I'm showing you this slide is to say that Helen and I both left school early. Our family circumstances were such that neither of the two of us had matric at the time. Uh, and uh, we had to go and fend for ourselves. And so as we planned our life and our strategy, we were determined that our two daughters should have a far better uh, life than what we'd experienced up to that point in, in time. Uh, in particular, we wanted them to be able to uh, have university degrees. And today I'm, I'm proud. I, I can just for between these two girls, there's four degrees and they're economically active uh, folks. And the way we did that is we created a plan that as each of them were born, so we started an investment for each of them, and we made sure that the interest that was being earned there went to their benefit, so that in fact, when it came to university time, we, we had the means to, to meet those obligations that we could get them through their, uh, uh, their degrees. So, wonderful family photo. I was blessed with uh, these folks stay over in London, uh, my youngest daughter and her husband, and then a little, little mischief, Holly, uh, and we could get together in December and have this photo. Now, here's, here's what I like to say, is that in business, uh, the senior leadership get together and they have a vision for that business and what they wish to achieve. And then that gets, gets converted into a strategic plan of what is the strategy that we follow and then the strategy gets converted into an operating plan as to what's the basic building blocks that's got to be achieved. And then in turn becomes a budget. 
stuff. And then, right? and then there's monthly meetings and so on. And everything functions according to that vision and that uh, strategic plan. So my question is, why, why don't we do that at home? Isn't that so? Shouldn't we also have a vision and mission for, for our, our home environment? And particularly at, at retirement, you know, I started out, uh, and as I meet people now, I say my passion is to help folks have financial happiness at retirement. That's a nice way of saying it, financial happiness at retirement, that you're self-sufficient and so on. And there's only one way you're going to get there, is that, uh, oops, going, going blank, blank. So, so the way we're going to get there, the way uh, this whole presentation is focused is on Albert Einstein saying that compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. He who understands it, earns it. He who doesn't, pays it. And there's the, the whole mystery of retirement planning unraveled. Is retirement planning is taking, saying, how much of your money can you use to go earn interest and compound that interest to grow to your benefit in the future, rather than having a lot of debt where you're paying interest and therefore diluting your income so that you have less and less to invest for the, for the future. So it's, it's quite amazing, but it, it comes down to, to that simple understanding, if I may use the word simple, uh, because I'm talking of compound interest, uh, is you know, make your money work for you. We need to get to the point where our money works for us, because after all, that's all that we've got. So work with me, let's do a bit of math. If you, if you were to be 60 today and you wish to, to retire today, but continue to enjoy your present standard of living. So the general rule of thumb, and it's a, a rule of thumb, take, take whatever your current take home pay is, combined yours and your spouse's, and multiply it by 300, and that'll tell you X, X millions. So let's use an example. If the take home pay after taxes is 50,000 rand and you've been in service for 20 years by the company, companies typically give you 2% per year in pension. So that would be 2 times 20 uh, is going to stand up giving you 15,000 rand pension. Okay, so if you subtract 15 from, from the 50, then there's 35,000. Uh, and times that by 300, so in actual fact, you've got 10 and a half, uh, okay, uh, and that's the minimum uh, that, uh, that, that in, in fact, that says that is the amount that you need to have, and of course, the house must be paid for. So now what we do is we go and look what is the value of the pension fund or the provident fund and the retirement annuities, and we subtract all of that, and then we find out what is the shortfall. In other words, we are measuring to be able to know. We've taken a rule of thumb that says this is how many millions we need at retirement if we wish to maintain the present standard of living. And I add the footnote that says the house needs to be paid for. So the question arises, how are we going to cover this, this, this shortfall? If you ask the pensioner what's their biggest worry, and, and I meet, I meet a, a lot of pensioners along the way. Invariably, the pensioner will, will, will mention three things that stand out. The one at the top is, do they have sufficient money? What they have now, is that sufficient? After all, look how the stock market is performing. And then, you know, if that wasn't bad enough, then we have the Reserve Bank correctly in the circumstances, the Reserve Bank substantially reducing the repo rate and therefore the interest rates go down. But what hurts the pensioner the most, if not low, low interest rates, because his earning power is, is, is diminished. And then they would also talk about medical aid and they would also talk about uh, the rates and taxes and so on. So in other words, these, these two expense items something that they can't control at all 
and they can't control too much here for what's happening. And because they retired, they aren't, they aren't able to generate more income. So uh, I, I'm a man of many sayings. And one of the sayings is that in the old days, we inherited from our parents. Nowadays, we inherit the parent. <laughs> okay. Uh, and think about this. Um, do we want to be able to become a guest of the state? Do we want to, I don't mean that in prison sense, I mean that in, as a liability where they need to pay us old age pension. And this is what SASA gives you at the moment. Uh, okay. 1,780 rand per month. And if you happen to be older than 75, Jesus, I'll give you an increase of 20 rand and you'll get 1,800 rand a month. Do you want to be there or do you want to enjoy your current standard of, of, of living? If it's the current standard of living, then we need to actually create a plan. So it's going to, have, going to happen a lot sooner than what we think. So we remove the stress, 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 stress by having a plan. There's a wonderful Chinese proverb that says the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. But failing that, the second best time is right now. So we need to have a plan and we need to action it now. In fact, 70% of the effort goes into designing the plan and 30% is in, the, in disciplining the execution of the plan. But of course, we need to remember to spread the risk uh, clearly, the closer you are to retirement, the more, the more conservative your investment profile needs to be. But the key things is to measure frequently and then to grasp that it's, your destiny is not in your broker's hands. It's not in anybody else's hands except your own. It's also in the Lord's hands, but he, he's, he gives us a brain and a pair of hands and he says, get on with it. So the key thing I'm driving home is if we haven't done it yet, we need to plan now and do it and get going. And the way we do that is this dreaded word called uh, budgeting. It's got a terribly bad reputation, isn't it? Uh, but really what it comes down to is that we now have a plan of how we're going to spend our money. You don't first spend the money and then discover afterwards well, what's happened. What you do is it creates the freedom because you know how at the start of the month, you know how you're going to disburse the money for that month. So it actually gives you freedom because you know exactly what's going to happen through the course of the, of, of, of the month. Uh, and by doing this, we get to a point where we start saying, I want to earn interest. I want to interest to compound in my favor. I want it to grow and grow so that I can have financial happiness at retirement. Uh, and my suggestions are this, and it's, it's, it's suggestions. It's, uh, I've learned that uh, a family unit needs to be a unit. It needs to do the budget together. And if at work we have monthly meetings and annual meetings and so on, what's, what's the problem? Why can't the family unit have a family budgeting night? Isn't that a fantastic way of also teaching our children about how money works, other than sitting at the table with us and discussing uh, the finances? And rotate the chairmanship. So one meeting, the husband's the chair, but for same voting power, but the next meeting, the wife's the chair and, and so on. And you learn how to set the priorities uh, and so on. And, and the key thing is what, what gets measured gets, gets, gets done. Okay, and now you can go and measure how much money you're actually devoting towards that golden, that incredible picture of having financial happiness at retirement. And the only way we're going to get there is we, we have to pay off our debt. I had folks I was speaking to, to, to last week, and they were saying, you know, they've been paying something like 10,000 rand a month on their debt for as long as they can remember. But why do they still owe this money? 
and I could ask them for detail, and then I could point out to them that out of the 10,000 rand, 9,847 rand was actually interest. In other words, there's like 150 rand, 153 rand reduction in the capital. Uh, and that's like a bond, isn't it? A bond takes a long time before your, the capital starts reducing. And in, in reality, a bond gets paid off in its last seven years because then it's snowballing in your, in your favour. And folks now, you know, because of the COVID uh, issue and the lockdown, uh, the banks offered, in fact, Standard Bank automatically gave folks three months moratorium on their, uh, on their bond payments. And folks said, gee, where's well, okay, yes, 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 my debt is going to be less, so let me, let me take this. And they didn't pay anything to the bond uh, for those three months. Now it turns out they've got a new calculation. Now that three months is going to cost them 18 months of payment, an uh, additional amount that they've got to pay. Because what's happened is there was no reduction in capital, but they charged you interest each day and they, and they capitalized at each month end. And so interest grew on interest, grew on interest. So the outstanding amount on the bond became that much, that much higher. Now, when they have to pay it off, it's actually going to take 18 months longer to, to, to pay, it, pay it off. Okay, so we need to attack the debt. And down the bottom there, I say, cut, 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 cut those credit cards. Let's cut those credit cards. Let's have a great ceremony, family meeting, the other credit cards, yes, this is this, da, 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 because we should use debit, debit cards instead. What's the difference between the two? Well, the debit card draws for money that's in your bank. And you've, if, you, if the bucket's empty, well, then you can't draw any. Uh, whereas the credit, they'd love to extend to you uh, more, more, more credit. So we, we, we recognize that in this world of ours, the debits come automatically. Uh, we've actually got a scratch for those, for those credits. Now the debits, those costs just keep rising and rising. No school fees just keep going and up. Food just keeps going up and up. Okay, yet, yet, where do we get a salary increase? In this environment we are now, uh, folks are lucky if they're receiving their normal pay, not to mention the possibility of increase. Yet, uh, we've got to manage, we've got to find a way. And those, those debits that can happen are things like unexpected medical emergencies, uh, a motor vehicle accident that wipes out your car and you still got to pay with higher purchase on the car and uh, or the sole business, okay, or any business that's that's been caught in the trap of COVID and what have you now is, is battling. So if the business is failing, then you can't pay a salary across. Okay. Or typically it's it's you know, I, I only go into Woolworths when I'm looking for a roast chicken. Because I find, I find uh, Woolworths' chickens are more plump. You get, you get more meat. Uh, and yes, you pay six rand more than what you get elsewhere, but you get a wonderfully prepared uh, uh, chicken. So, but the rest of the time, I, I study specials at checkers or pick and pay. And nowadays we do home delivery. Okay, we don't, we don't go out. I think I spent 300 rand on petrol uh, last month because uh, we do all of this now in, in this manner. Uh, but the point I want to convey is there was a lady in front of me at the last time I was at, at the Brewer's counter who had a very full uh, a trolley and she unpacked all of the groceries uh, and what have you and then she put in a pin for a card and got paid. And then the, the lady, the cashier lady, offered her the, the slip and she said, no thanks, throw it away. And she took her trolley and out, out, out she went. And I thought, oh, you really? I've just seen a perfect example that she doesn't know how much she spent, which is okay, but when she gets her credit card statement at the end of the month, I bet you there's a shock. I bet you it says, gee, words, what, what, what happened here? Uh, uh, okay. 
So sometimes it's things we do to ourselves deliberately at other times, those debits that come automatically is what's caused by the, uh, um, the environment around us. Um, there's retrenchment, there's uh, um, furlong, there's you know, all those other difficulties that are, that are happening. So indebtedness is a blip from life's road to the golden years of retirement. We can correct it today. Okay. Uh, in economics, we know that we are taught, Economics 101 talks about sacrifice alternatives. And I like to explain that if you've got a bucket uh, of water in it, that water represents your income. If you put in your, your income into the bucket, as you spend through the month, you're taking water out of the bucket. Uh, if when the bucket's empty and the month is still long, uh, you, you're caught, isn't it? Uh, okay, you can clearly only use how much water is in the bucket. You can only use how much money is in the bucket. We South Africans are spoiled with credit. We attach a pipe yeah, to, 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 to the bucket and we allow lots more water to go in. And then we accept we're going to pay the interest on those charges. Yeah, okay, so then we go along to the bank and we take a revolving credit plan and we're going to pay a lot more interest. Now the interest is compounding in the bank's favor and to your disadvantage. Okay, whereas what we should be doing is we should be investing that same interest to your advantage. So do you want to earn interest? Or do you want to pay it? So Jasper, that's where I'm getting to. Uh, I want to say thank you. Here's, here's a way of contacting me. Um, just simply send an SMS or a WhatsApp to that telephone number. Uh, and simply use the words gig 911. <laughs> help. The help line at 911. And you'll get a, a reply within three business hours. So my closing remark is, please, please think about it, please. Do you want to earn interest or do you want to pay interest? Do you want it to compound in your favor and have financial happiness at retirement? Or do you want it to compound against you and find that you can never retire? The choice is yours, not your brokers. The choice is yours and yours alone. Thank you very much for listening to me. Uh, delighted to be with you this evening. Thank you very much for the opportunity, Yasmin.